Big arrows. Where the big arrows? I can shoot this one too. I ain't, it ain't like I gotta have. I might just shoot this one. I hadn't shot that. I hadn't shot that gun a lot. Let's shoot. I ain't shot that other one. I killed turkeys with it. I ain't never really patterned it much. We can shoot it a couple times. Just see what's up. Brand new, hot off the lathe, bone collector Carlson choke tube. Guaranteed to mince turkey head, beak meat, it's a head mincer. This is ready to go. Yours kind of ready to go. No, we're ready to go. Okay, I'll, I'll get one more. I'll get one more for. I'll get one more for your brothers. I know that it's not in the script, but it should be noted. So. The Longbeard Thunder Chip. Strutting with complete confidence, like a pimp in Compton. Over valleys, over hills, even through the worthless sweet gum trees. Let this day be marked. The flop can't be stopped. I got this rigged up right here where I can put a Tacticam inside of it. This is a uh, decoy I kind of invented, but I saw uh, some other folks come up with one just like it almost. But I never come out with this and other than just had this one made. But, but that right there, I put that tap cam out there. I can hit my remote. And anymore, I don't, I, don't even, uh, I don't even set my decoy out a lot. It's kind of controversial because now I set my decoy out here beside me, and I try to just yelp a turkey in if I can get him within you know, 40, 50 yards, what I think is, uh, you know, killing distance, then I kill him. But if he hangs up, especially in the woods, this is right beside me, especially his head goes behind a tree or he tucks his wing based on these actions, then I'll just pick this up, it's right in front of me, he got on camo, twist it, show it to him. So many times, that's all it takes. If you didn't tried your calls and tried to subtle call him in, soft call, they see this a lot of times, it's on. But you better be ready because when he starts coming, he's typically coming fast and I stick it in the ground. And then that way you can follow him on in and kill him, but that helps a lot. And that way you do away with the turkey or the decoy shy turkeys. And they're not decoy shy because they think it's a decoy and they go, aha, I know what this is. They, they're decoy shy because they're very nervous coming in about the social structure they're in. They're worried about getting their butt whooped. They know they're not supposed to be there. So a lot of times a turkey that is really, really ready to breed and has the confidence to breed, he's gonna come all the way in there in gun range anyway. You don't need anything. You don't need a hen decoy, anything. If you, if you put the right call on him and you got his trigger tripped, you're in the place you wanna be, they're coming. But a lot of times it takes that last little bit. And sometimes you might have to twist a little bit and you hold it, but again, you're motionless, you're twisting it. And I've even, last, last step, sometimes I'll shake it like he's wounded or just something. I don't know, they're looking for something weak or whatever the deal is. And a lot of times that's what it takes to get them in. So when I turkey hunt, I'm trying to kill a turkey and I leave the, uh, I make sure I just follow the rules and regulations and outside of that, leave the ethics up to whatever I can do to kind of get a turkey dead, whether I call them in, crawl on them, decoy them, crawl behind a decoy, no decoys. That's, that's just how I feel about it. I, I've been going out on my deck. I've been tied down with whaling and Corona, so I hadn't been going anywhere, but I've been going out there and mock listening. I ain't got nothing to listen to. I just walk out on the back porch on the river and I ain't ever heard a turkey there, but I always one. listen. I've always been up every morning listening. And it's and it's and I remember every day I hadn't heard one, but I'm thinking 725, if one would gobble early, would be the first right. I would hear. 720, 725. Yeah, that, that sounds like a plan. I, I don't think we won't, but I think we go to that far gate down there where Mason kills his first turkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and listen right. from there, and that way we can hear. Last year, I think we bumped turkeys. We, we you oh, yeah, wasn't with us, but we yeah, bumped they, turkeys. They, they, they turkeys back in there. McCoy, you want to go tomorrow too? Mm -hmm. I want to go. You want to go? Okay. They come that redneck right line up there. I need pants. Huh? I need pants. I have like a non-typical jacket. Though. You can get by without them, son. I don't. I, I need underwear, but it ain't letting me stop me from being right here today. Fire in the hole! Got it. Go see if you got it. See if we got him, Wiley. Let's go see. Did he get it? Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Did you hold that on? 
it was a good, it was, it was good even, right perfect. There. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, yeah. He did. That ain't, you know, for five shot. It's not bad at all. That ain't bad at all. It's 34 yards. Oh, that ain't I'm bad. I'm going shoot mine now. Okay. Kind of every year ritual, we just shooting our shotguns, but mainly because we got brand new choke tubes. This is a uh, Carlson choke tube here. And this is a brand new little 20 gauge gun I got from my buddy Derek Whitaker up at, uh, or Derek Carraway at Whitaker Gun. It's just a little youth kind of model, but actually it's cut down and made just for an adult, just lightweight 20 gauge, so. What we got here is no excuses. Here's what we're trying to accomplish here, I'll show you. I mean, most of you guys who turkey hunt know when we talk about pattern of shotgun, but really all I'm trying to accomplish, these are all guns that I've shot before, but I changed out and put this Carlson choke tube, this new bone collector model. So what I'm wanting to do is at about 35 yards with number five shot, the biggest thing, I want to see if my gun is shooting right or left or up and down. Obviously you don't have a way to move your sight on a typical shotgun bead. If you're shooting like a red dot, I got a couple of those that I shoot from Bushnell that are really nice. But in this case, I'm just shooting a bead and I'm wanting to see if I got a good universal kind of center pattern, which this gun obviously shoots dead like the bead, which is nice. That's a pretty good pattern. Look, I got a ton of kill shots. This target marks the vitals. Anywhere in the spine will kill a turkey. This is five shot. So this is shooting dead on about 35 yards. So. I could keep pushing this target out and I would know my effective kill range, which this gun's probably gonna be at least a 40, 45 yard gun based on this being a 35 yard shot. So that's all I'm trying to do is pattern my shotgun to seeing where most of the shot are going. This is going true center. So that's what I'm trying to do. And so obviously that is a perfect 35 yard shot. So that gun's ready to go for that load and for that choke tube. That's good performance right there in my opinion. It's a lucky lady pack. Bat wing, got a knockout, bombshell, double reed. That's ready to go, man. Sounds good. Right out of pack. I like, if I can find one that I can kind of call soft and subtle and still get that real kind of raspy, but kind of roll over, I call it, like that rusty wheel, but yet I can still get down on it. Like this is right out of the pack. It hadn't even probably got wet good, but if I can kind of get aggressive. But that's good for locating a turkey and even working one way off. But a lot of times when you're on the barrel, if I can't give those little soft uh, hen yips, it's hard for me to trust in the call, but this one I think I can. <laughs> to me, that's a really important call to make, so that call's got what I'm looking for. That is a cool looking cut. That is actually, I think that's a, what they call a bombshell, a hybrid cut. What's up, Papa? What's going on? We starting all this off amidst one of the biggest pandemics we've seen in a long time. I mean, this dates back to, I can't rem I don't remember, and a lot of people way older than me don't remember anything of this sort. Literally, lockdown, California is on a complete lockdown. And so, one of the best things you can do is go turkey hunting. And thankfully, one of the bright, shining stars, if there's any, which not a lot, but the timing of this, at least it hit for us that like to fish and turkey hunt. The seasons are coming in, the bass fishing's getting good. And uh, our Georgia season 
is just coming in. So this will be the first place we're starting the Can't Stop the Flop series here. And uh, turkey hunting, as we've talked, is my biggest passion. I love it. And I'm excited to kind of show y'all some of the things I'm looking for that helps me kind of be successful in the woods. And it's funny, back when I was a kid, first started turkey hunting, I couldn't buy a turkey. The first time I went, I shot a turkey. Four years later, I got my sack at one. So obviously I realized just how lucky I'd been on my first turkey my dad and I shot. But um, early season like this, and I'm just gonna come up here and show you a few things that I'm looking for here on my farm and uh, in Booger Bottom where we hunt and kind of give you an idea of what you're looking for early season versus later in the season. So we'll go up here and I'll start looking around. But as you can see, this is a pecan orchard that my wife and I own, and it's, it's getting really green. And no doubt, within a week or so, a lot of these turkeys are gonna start migrating or getting more out into this green orchard, into my food plots. But right now, I promise you, I bet you we're gonna find most of these turkeys back in the woods. A lot of people make mistakes and start looking out in the fields early. The fields get hotter as the season progresses. And uh, maybe we can go find some scratching, some turkey scratching and things like that. And um, kind of show you what I think and where we're gonna find the turkeys based on a little bit of scouting I already have done. So hopefully this all leads to success. Our opening day is tomorrow, so. I wanna show y'all one quick thing right here that I, that I always do this. This helped a lot with turkey. I just fertilized this the other day, but this is a big food plot. Obviously I put in here for deer. You can see where it kind of burnt back when I put this fertilizer right here. But this is old backwood attraction food plot. It's got clover in it, oats, a little bit of wheat, some chicory and stuff. And um, this is obviously right now it's dry. These turkeys have come right out in it, no problem. But early in the morning when the dew is real heavy, these turkeys ain't gonna wanna be out in this. I have seen them get out in it early like this, but they don't want to unless they just have to. When you rake your foot across it, you notice there's no bugs. There's no bugs. When you, when you start raking your foot across and you see grasshoppers and bugs, any type of bugs, them turkeys are the same thing and they love it. But what I do in a situation like this, even when my food plots start growing up tall and those bugs are getting it real good, those turkeys can hide from cover, but obviously the hunting is really tough. So I'll take a food plot like this, I'll take my old X-Mock lawnmower or I'll take a bush hog or something and I'll bush hog the edge as low as I can get it and give them turkeys a good edge and I usually have cut it right down by the timber line. And so a lot of times those turkeys roost down in the timber and they can come up and in that low stuff, they can also forage and go right through there looking for bugs. They got cover from the hawks and especially once those hens have hatched those first biddies, they got a lot of cover for those turkeys to come out in. And a lot of times when the field grows up high enough, a lot of times out in the middle of these food plots, these hens are nests. So rather than just cutting your whole food plot down, let it grow up high and it makes good habitat. But if you're trying to hunt the turkeys, just realize if it's later in the season, you got a turkey gobbling right here. Early in the morning with a heavy dew on the ground, it's gonna be hard to call a gobbler across that field. So you wanna be on that side of the woods and kill him as he's coming into the edge. They don't like to get out here when it's really wet. So that's just something I do and it's always paid off pretty big. Over the years in, in the South, and specifically right now, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, places in Tennessee, South Carolina, our habitat is, is, is changed a lot based on where you typically find turkeys. Uh, as you see, right here is a section, it's a little more growed up. This has been timbered in here and it's a little thicker. And a lot of times early in the season, I seem to find turkeys in these planted pines and thicker stuff. Something about that time of year, there's more food and still left over in these woods. So a lot of times you can find a lot of scratching. My papa likes to call them old natural scratching. And um, so based on where you can find scratching, a lot of times that'll give you an idea that you know turkeys are in the area. And, and uh, if you can find any kind of fresh scratching and just turkey tracks, as it's, it's trivial as it sounds, Obviously, you know turkeys are there because sometimes if you don't see any turkey sign and you're not hearing turkeys, well, it's pretty simple. You're not having turkeys on that immediate area where you're listening or where you're scouting. So if I can just find fresh scratching or if I can just find tracks, then I know that next morning, typically, I at least should be in earshot of hearing a turkey. 
So just because there's not a lot of ton of sign, just any kind of sign that looks any kind of remotely fresh, even if it's just a little bit, if I'm blind and don't know the property, I'm gonna start listening there because at least that'll give me an idea. I guarantee you, especially on a clear morning, you can hear a long ways and you'll usually pick up a goblin turkey in the morning. This, this, is, oh, this is some turkey scratching you. It's hard to see it, but it's not much, but you can see where it's, it's raked back. But when a turkey scratches, even he's got rhythm to himself, you'll hear it. And a lot of people uh, make that call like a turkey scratching to, you know, like, you know, they'll do like that. Man, that's a squirrel or I don't know what that is. When a turkey scratches, everything they do, they have a rhythm. They're like. There's usually just one, one, two, one, or sometimes it's be one, one, two. They'll always be it. If you hear a flock of turkeys, they're coming. But you can see even what I did there is almost imitate exactly what real turkey scratching is gonna look like. But in the South, right now, we just had, I would say the last 10, 15 years, we've been overrun by dead gum armadillos. And people think they in some turkey scratching. And you'll see, you'll see stuff that looks like this in the woods and they'll think, well, that's turkey scratching. That's, that ain't turkey scratching. If that, if, that, if that thing's just peeped up like that, that's just old fat armadillo. You can almost see where he made tracks. Almost looks like old python or pretty good sized chicken snake crawl through the woods. That ain't turkey scratching. Turkey scratching will be very defined. The turkey's gonna get usually to the base plate under this and he's looking for that food, whether it's acorns or bugs, mite, whatever it is he's looking for. They'll even eat ticks. So. But if you're blind and don't know nothing else and you see some sign like this, man, be a good spot to start listening. But this is my farm, so I kind of know, I know the areas and I know kind of what's going on with the creek system and all. But man, there's so many things that can lock a turkey down on you that you don't see. You might can have a turkey gobbling right over there a couple hundred yards and think you got a smooth sailing. They could be a creek. They could be all these things behind you. So having a good map, are better than even a map. It's nice to have a map, but it's just, if you've had boots on the ground and you know what's in between you, from deadfalls like that, to just creeks, to drainages, barbed wire fences, all that makes a difference to the lay of the land. Is that turkey on over on the next ridge? Is he gotta come off that hill, down, cross a creek, and then come up a ridge on the flat that you're on? All that makes a difference in all ways is gonna help make you decide where you should push the envelope because in those situations you're going to know if you need to get to that edge and you're going to know if your risks are slim to even be able to get to that point without bumping the turkey but if you understand the temperature of a turkey and understand the obstacles behind them all those are going to have factors in how aggressive you are and where you want to make your setup versus i hear a turkey gobble just sit down and call them in in a perfect world that'll work but sometimes, especially in the South, and even really all across the country, there's a lot of different obstacles and variables that can change the whole outcome of the hunt and the success of it. Turkeys obviously don't get in the water and take a bath, but they dust. And you can see there's some dust bowls here. You know, turkey just get in here and just no dust all over them. Matter of fact, you can see, look at there, there's some, there's some, you know, based on what old schools will tell us, that's a hen. Usually if it's in a big ball like that, that's hen dropping. A lot of time a gobbler, I have a big long and sometimes make a J. You have even a lot of people who will tell you based on that dung, they can tell you if it's a long beard or a All I do know is, is 90% of the time a gobbler will you know, when he when he lays one down, it will be a longer turd. Hen's usually a ball. I don't know. It'll be one thing I ask Jesus when I get up there. If you ever see a turkey dusting, it, it reminds me of a you know an enjoyable uh, bubble bath or something. They really seem to enjoy just the I don't know something about the relaxation of throwing stuff all over them. There's a little bit more. My phone ringing. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to kill a turkey. My phone will ringing all the time. Hello. Hey.
Hard to believe that was three years ago on a Can't Stop the Flight when we began season one. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And click the notifications. We'll let you know when we got another one up. If you like this Can't Stop the Flop episode, I can't believe it's been three years, like I said, be sure to go to My Outdoor TV on your apps and download My Outdoor TV on any device that you got, from your computer to your phones to your smart devices, iPads, tablets, whatever it is, and be sure to watch it. We got brand new episodes up right now on My Outdoor TV. Also, Bone Collector is airing on Outdoor Channel every Sunday night at 9.30, so be sure to check it out, and we just appreciate you watching all the content that we're out there doing. We love promoting hunting and fishing and really everything outdoors and especially turkey hunting man because this is the way i got into the industry so remember happy hunting and hunt the way you want to baby go by the rules and regulations and it is yours remember that Whoa.